guys! Welcome! It's so nice to see you today. My name's Kat. Today we will be talking about Hurricane Milton, hurricanes in, hurricanes in general, and if Hurricane Milton was a letdown or just foreshadowing of what's to come. When people heard a Category 5 hurricane was going to make landfall off the coast of Tampa, Florida, many people were worried. This includes me. I am actually from Tampa, and my entire family was down there when Milton hit, so I was very nervous for them. Down in both directions between Tennessee and North Carolina. The French Broad River is reaching record levels near the Biltmore Estate. The Buncombe County Sheriff says its office received more than a thousand missing persons reports. Thousands of people are still without power and water. With many people having just survived Hurricane Helen, and others still reeling from the season that they had this year. A lot of people were scared of losing their homes. The news was very serious about the potential damage and even loss of life from this storm, with even the mayor stating that people would possibly lose their lives if they did not evacuate. If you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're gonna die. Yet, with Hurricane Milton's arrival hitting as a Category 3 directly below Tampa Bay in the Sarasota area, many felt that the urgency that was drummed up about the hurricane was overblown. That the news was possibly using this storm to drum up propaganda and fear in people, or at the very least that this was just another typical hurricane. I'm in evacuation zone A of Hurricane Milton, and here's three reasons why I'm not leaving. Number one, everybody's worried about flooding from the storm surge, but look how high I am from the ground. There's no way water's getting anywhere close to my apartment. Number two, people are worried about how strong the winds are. The apartment is made out of full concrete. There's no way that this building is going anywhere, plus it's brand new. Number three, people are worried about me being stranded, but that's why I prepped ahead of time. Some chips, I have some soup, I have some peanut butter filled pretzels. I'm good to go. Lastly, there's absolutely no way I'm dying to a hurricane named Milton. In 24 hours, I will have a pool in my backyard. Most cars are evacuated. Not a lot of people are here. I'm in a mandatory evacuation zone and I'm not worried, but of course it's pretty scary seeing all this stuff on the news. In my situation, someone who's pretty high off the ground, the number one thing is the storm surge, obviously being so close to the water. I don't need to worry about that. As long as I got food, water, I'll be fine. But everybody's freaking out, like chill out. It's gonna be okay. Now, is that the truth? No. So why was the damage done in Tampa Bay not as intense as people believed it was going to be? The danger brought about by Hurricane Milton, the thing that professionals believed would cause the most loss of life, was storm surge. Now, storm surge is the amount of water that is usually carried in with a big storm or a hurricane that pushes water inland and causes mass flash flooding as well as waters that won't recede for a very long time. The expected storm surge is terrifying. Look at this. We want everyone to know if they are in an evacuation zone, listen to local officials and leave when ordered to do so. However, due to Milton's trajectory and not actually hitting Tampa Bay head on, but hitting directly below it in Sarasota, as well as the storm's counterclockwise spin, water was pushed outside of the bay instead of inwards. Run out of the bay. Here, Louise is shooting for along Bayshore Boulevard. Hopefully, you can hear me. The water is gone, so it has been sucked out by Milton, which we suspected was going to happen. Um, our light's not bright enough to see how far out it goes, but I don't see any water for as far as I can see. So, had Milton been just a couple miles higher, we would have had the back end of the storm pushing water inwards instead of the top end of the storm pushing water away from the Bay Area. Now, whether people listen or not, this is actually something they explain time over and over again whenever Tampa Bay experiences a storm near them and storm surge is a problem. So we'll talk about the storm surge that has shifted a little bit to the south and dropped a little bit in some of the highest spots, but nine to 13 feet devastating storm surge from Sarasota down to about Fort Myers and then Fort Myers down to about Naples 8 to 12 feet. So still major flooding here in the western part of Florida. And even though that storm surge has come down in and around Tampa in Tampa Bay, still some major flooding in that part of the Sunshine State. The emphasis on the potential loss of life, this was all very valid as if the hurricane had simply been 
a few miles higher, that storm surge would have been double what actually happened. Now, there's another question that needs to be asked about these hurricanes. Are they getting worse? According to NOAA, the government's weather agency, while the frequency of these storms occurring doesn't seem to be increasing, the intensity at which they go from category one to category five is increasing rapidly. We saw this with Milton. Despite what the hurricane track said, Milton stayed a five for a lot longer. Milton actually went from a category one to a category five in the span of 24 hours. And anyone who is watching the hurricane track will know that Milton stayed a hurricane five for a little bit longer than they predicted it would. This can all be attributed to climate change. The Gulf of Mexico has risen now the Gulf of Mexico has risen in temperature, surpassing. <laughs> now the Gulf of Mexico has actually risen in temperature faster than the other bodies of water around it. Over the span of 100 years, it has risen about two degrees hotter. Earlier this year, a new study came out showing that parts of the Gulf of Mexico are actually warming twice as fast as the global ocean. Now this study used temperature data going back from the year 1950, and by sampling more than 192,000 profiles of the Gulf of Mexico, what they found is that the water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are warming at all levels. Down here, in the average depths of around 5,000 feet, but most especially warming up in this part of the Gulf of Mexico, in the top 200 feet. This is important for us to be aware of because the warmer temperatures are in this part of the Gulf of Mexico, the more fuel things like tropical storms and hurricanes have. What the data found is that just since 1970, the water temperatures and especially the top 200 feet have risen by nearly two degrees Fahrenheit. Hurricanes require hot water in order to form and not only form but intensify this means the warmer the water the faster the hurricane will intensify the weekly average gulf sea surface temperatures broke 88 degrees for the first time since 1981 that average takes into account all of the sectors of the gulf the reading is a staggering 2.6 degrees fahrenheit above that 1991 to 2020 average and sea surface temperature readings in the Gulf of Mexico are in the upper 80s and even some 90s offshore in places. This also means hurricane season could expand. If the water is staying warm longer and getting warm faster, then hurricane season could extend another month. And that would absolutely increase the frequency of hurricanes. I saw a lot of scary comments out there saying that Hurricane Milton wasn't that bad. I'll stay next time. It wasn't that big of a storm. Uh, everyone was overreacting. It, it wasn't that big of a deal. Hurricane Milton wasn't a letdown. It was foreshadowing of the storms that we will possibly be getting in the near future. Hopefully Milton didn't give folks a false sense of security that these hurricanes aren't as dangerous as your local authorities are telling you. In fact, fatality doesn't usually come from these hurricanes. It comes from the flooding afterwards. Well, we can be thankful that Hurricane Milton didn't do as much damage as people were thinking. It really is just an idea of what is possible to come. It's also really important to emphasize that a lot of people did have damage done to their homes. A lot of people's cars were damaged in the storm. A lot of trees fell and the flooding is still incredible, especially in Sarasota. First responders across the state worked overnight and throughout the day rescuing people stranded by floodwaters. It's okay, you're okay. And from homes damaged by debris and falling trees. In Pinellas County, water rescue crews worked for hours, saving hundreds of people who'd been trapped in an apartment complex inundated with floodwater. Manuel Mejia biked out of the flood. His girlfriend is still back in their home, but safe. But then all of a sudden, the hurricane just had another, had his own mind, came back to us and it was too late to get out. I wasn't expecting it to be that bad, but they were hitting very strong, and being in a mobile home, it really hit really strong. But the winds, like every single time there was a powerful wind, you could feel it in the mobile home just shaking. Carlos Mar, whose mobile home was flooded with a foot of water, was rescued by boat this morning, even before it made landfall. Milton's fierce winds set off at least 27 tornadoes, including on Florida's east coast, destroying homes and killing several people in St. Lucie County, submerging entire roads and businesses. Milton's high winds sent a construction crane crashing into a nearby building. 
and shredded the roof of Tropicana Field Baseball Stadium. As it churned across the state, Milton downed power lines and transformers, sparking fires and leaving more than three million Floridians in the dark. It's clearly a sense of relief in certain spots here, but there's a lot of work to be done to still understand just how severe the damage is across this state. Remember, it's always better to be safe than sorry. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today. It's been really fun. If you would like to leave a comment or a like, dislike, um, just let me know your feedback so I can better accustom my videos to my viewers. You can follow my Instagram, my Twitch, my TikTok. It'll all be linked. Yeah, I haven't made videos in a while. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I've been busy. I moved. Very obviously, I moved. And my computer's broken, so I don't know about that Twitch, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you'll be back soon.